After a decade of patiently waiting, my seed grown avocado tree has finally produced its first avocado. Like any living thing, fruit trees do not reproduce until they reach the age of sexual maturity. On average, avocados become capable of reproduction at year 10. This tree here is in its ninth season, a few months shy of 10 years old. And look what we have here, her first baby avocado. Now that you know the first important thing about seed grown avocado trees, that on average you gotta wait about a decade before you get our beloved fruit. The second thing you need to know is that seed grown avocado trees are unpredictable. Just like human beings don't know if they're gonna give birth to a baby that's tall or short, fat or skinny, smart or dumb. Every single seed you plant in the ground is gonna grow a tree that gives us a unique and unpredictable fruit. This Choquette variety matures in the month of September. It grows to over three pounds. It has a light green skin. It's egg shaped and the skin has ridges like a pumpkin. The Hall variety avocado is pear shaped. It's dark green and bumpy. We picked these a month later than the Choquettes. The Black Prince variety trees are loaded every year like this guy. Their fruit is also egg shaped, but it's a very dark green skin that gets like these little veiny formations in it. We start picking the Donnie variety in the month of May. It's got a very shiny skin. Its flesh is probably the most mild flavored avocado at least I've ever tasted. And instead of giving us a round seed, it gives us an oblong seed with a point at the top. The Hialeah red variety gives us, you guessed it, red avocados. The Oro Negro and the Brogdon, they give us black skinned avocados. And speaking of skin, you can chew through and even eat the skin on a Brogdon, whereas the skin of a Monroe could more accurately be described as a shell. Some avocados are round like a baseball, and others, like this Russell, are the size and shape of a bowling pin. Every one of those varieties I showed you started out exactly like this guy. Someone planted the seed, and then someone waited, on average, a decade until it produced its first fruit. Then based on all those criteria, he determined whether it was worthy to give it a name and start to market it. So yes, I got my first fruit from this tree, but it might be a year or two before I determine if it tastes good, because I might pick this at the right time. I might pick it too early. I have to guess, and I only got one shot this year. So it might be next season before I get a whole bunch, maybe a dozen or 20 or 30, that I can pick one a month and determine what month to harvest. And then when I finally do hit the right month, Maybe it tastes disgusting. So it could be another year, another two years, another five years before I've determined if we have discovered the Sleepy Lizard variety avocado. So now the smart ones amongst you are saying, well, Tom, if a seed grown tree takes 10 years and it's unpredictable, how are there so many little Hass avocados that are identical to each other in my supermarket? Tom, how could you possibly have multiple Monroe trees, multiple Choquette trees, multiple Russells, Brogdons, Oro Negros, Donnies, if every seed produces a unique tree? Farmers solved that problem thousands of years ago. Farmers discovered if there was an avocado tree that gave us fruit whose characteristics we'd like to replicate, that you could clone the tree. We use a technique called grafting to clone our trees. Let's pretend that over the next two or three years, we determine that this tree who produced this one fruit this season starts to give us lots of fruit consistently every season and that fruit tastes good. I will name it the Sleepy Lizard Variety Avocado and begin to sell it. But I can't service a market with only one tree. I need more trees. But we've already learned that I can't take a seed from this tree and plant it because I won't get the same avocado. I have to clone the tree. And I do that by taking a cutting and growing this into a mature tree. And the way I do that is by planting a tree inside a tree. I'm gonna take this cutting and fuse it 
with a little seed grown seedling. And in a couple of months, these little buds here where the leaves were, these will sprout and this will turn into its own tree. Now, full disclosure, this is really a simulation. I'm not really trying to graft this for real because we're in the month of June and we really get the best budwood. We get the best cuttings more toward November, December, January. But you're going to get the idea. So the first thing I did was I looked for a piece of a branch that had these little buds starting on the side. You see that? They're just starting to push out. That's what I want to grow. But that's not going to grow just sitting on a kitchen counter or just sitting there in the air. I need to fuse this with an already existing seed grown tree. So the first step, I want to make sure that this thing retains its moisture throughout the entire grafting process. So I'm going to wrap it in a tape called Buddy Tape. Now we'll go over to the nursery and find a seedling to graft this guy into. Okay, here's one I think will work pretty good. Real quick, before I take this cutting and graft it to this tree, let me show you what a successful graft looks like. Here we have one of those varieties I showed you earlier. This happens to be a Russell variety, if you remember the one I said that grows to the size and shape of a bowling pin. And if you look here, you will see, this, this side might be a better way of showing it, you will see a knot. This is the graft junction. And if you look really, really close, you'll see a split here and a split here. That's from the original seedling. And then you'll see a wedge where this, this was the cutting, where this used to be only, look just like this, only this size was inserted in. And over the past two years, that junction is healed and this tree has begun to grow. This is actually a combination of two trees. You know, I probably should have my glasses on for this. Okay, step one, we're gonna take our seedling. This is a seed grown. This is a tree grown from an avocado seed. I already cut the top off like I showed you. Now I'm gonna cut a little slit right into the trunk. Now I'm gonna take my cutting and I'm gonna cut a wedge in the cutting. And we could cut right through the buddy tape. Now I'm gonna fit the wedge into the slot I made in my tree. And I'm just moving over here to the truck so that I have the space to, to wrap this thing up. And as I'm wrapping, I'm making sure that the one side I chose to keep flush stays flush as I wrap. So look, I'm gonna wrap this up. I tie it off in a knot. And here we have a grafted or cloned tree. Once I have my tree grafted, I take care of it in our shade house because we don't want this guy to be in full sunlight. But as we know, all plants need a little bit of sunlight, which is why we have this shade house. And I'll care for it. I'll, I'll check the dirt. Whenever the dirt's a little bit dry, I'll give it some water. And eventually, those little buds I showed you, when they start to grow, they'll push through the buddy tape and I'll have created a new tree. Here's a great example of what I'm talking about, except for this happens to be a mango tree, not an avocado tree. But as you see here, here's a cutting wrapped in buddy tape. And instead of using grafting tape to close it up, we just wrapped it with zip ties. But look here, there's a brand new little flush of green growth that pushed its way through the buddy tape. This guy is a survivor. Here you see one that's further along. Look at here's the cutting and there's the new green growth coming out the top. This is the seedling. You see here the, the tape where we wrap this cutting into this seedling and we started to get this new growth. Now look at what you see here is some growth from below the graft. I just pulled that off. Why? I don't want that. That's random seed growth. I don't know what that's going to give me. I don't want the tree focusing its energy on growing that. I want this tree focusing 100% of its energy on growing this. All this might seem like an awful lot of work compared to just putting a seed in soil and waiting 10 years. But remember, time is money. And farmers have to pay a mortgage on their land. And we need to make an income. And waiting 10 years for fruit that might or might not taste good is a huge risk. On the other hand, a grafted tree produces fruit in year three. 
it produces fruit that we know how it will taste because it's identical to the tree we took it from and we also know if it's going to be a good producer. Now you're saying to yourself, wait a minute Tom, earlier you said that a tree has to achieve sexual maturity before it can produce fruit and for avocados that's an average of 10 years. How does a grafted tree produce in only three? Well, the cutting is already sexually mature. This little section I took from a tree that's already fruiting, this guy's already sexually mature. This guy is already capable of producing offspring. This guy is already capable of producing fruit. And like I said, this is a technique that farmers developed thousands of years ago, and we've only been getting better at it generation after generation after generation. If grafting has so many advantages over growing from seed, why did I spend the last nine years waiting to see if this tree would fruit and if the fruit would taste good? The answer is I got the space and I got the time. I've got five acres here. I've got over 300 avocado trees on this property. I've got avocado trees on other properties. When I planted this thing, I was what, like 44 years old? I did it for the novelty. I just wanted to see if I could create the Sleepy Lizard variety avocado. And it made me so happy over the winter when I found this guy flowering. And it made me even happier when I saw that little guy, that one avocado growing on this tree. And if you're thinking about growing avocados, you know your options are to grow from seed or to graft. You know the pros and cons of both methods and you can decide for yourself which technique you want to use. If on the other hand, you're one of those people who like to eat avocados, but you have no interest in growing them, get your avocados from me at guacfarm.com. G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M.com. And the big announcement, we just started selling avocado cuttings as well. So if you'd like to try your own hand at grafting, and you wanna try one of our varieties, the Simmons, the Donnie, the Monroe, the Choquette, the Brogdon, the Oro Negro, you can get your cuttings at guacfarm.com as well. Now I mentioned earlier that it's not prime avocado grafting season, but it is prime mango grafting season, and I gotta spend the rest of my day grafting mangoes. While I do that, you go to guacfarm.com, and I will see you on the next video.